A year ago, we were planning for global action to tackle the triple emergencies of climate, nature loss, and rising inequality. Then the pandemic introduced all kinds of delays, and it still feels now as if so much remains to be done. I want to take stock of what we've done and also how we plan to build on that for the challenges of 2022. It's been really sobering to see the extent of failure of the rich world to show solidarity with low-income countries. When it comes to global justice, we have to do better and it all connects. You won't have climate justice without vaccine justice and justice on dealing with the pandemic. We've seen the most staggering increase in the wealth of the richest people on the planet at the same time as poor countries and poor communities have suffered from rising debt, from loss of markets, from the inability to fund recovery. The world over, lockdown tactics have hit the poorest hardest, particularly women and workers in the informal sector. From IIED, we have documented the impacts in different environments, working with local partners, outlined a route map for transformative urban recovery, and highlighted the amazing role played by local organisations in protecting livelihoods and health and providing mutual support at the height of the pandemic. We've also driven forward thinking on how debt relief funding can be used to drive green recovery and positive action on climate and nature. And we have worked to emphasize the importance of protecting and strengthening indigenous peoples and local communities' rights and voice as key to ensuring better protection of nature and biodiversity. And we have provided guidance to strengthening the themes of equity and justice in the global biodiversity framework, which will be the main output from CBD COP15 in Kunming. Our work on the climate emergency has been tireless through the year, and at COP26, we worked really hard to put climate justice on the global agenda. The principles for locally-led adaptation, which IID played a key role in developing, were adopted by over 70 organisations and formally endorsed in advance by the G7. This, we hope, is a major step to overcoming the dysfunctions in climate finance. We continued our support to the Least Developed Countries Negotiating Group, and all in all, by the end of COP26, finance pledged for locally led approaches to adaptation reached around $1.5 billion. And we're proud to have worked with partners to achieve this. We also worked with partners to put the key issue of loss and damage on the agenda with a set of powerful videos highlighting the lived reality of loss and damage in the climate crisis in the poorest communities on the planet. Going into 2022, so much still needs to be done global climate action is falling short in many areas. In terms of mitigation, we're nowhere near where we need to be, and we need to see the world's biggest emitters to step up with new commitments and new action plans before Sharm el-Sheikh and COP27. Climate finance needs to step up in volume, quality and scope and encompass loss and damage as a key theme. The world needs a powerful, practical, equitable and effective framework for combating nature and biodiversity loss, which must be delivered at CBD COP15 in Kunming. And the global debt crisis is going to have to be addressed in such a way that allows for a transformative recovery for people and planet. The challenges are daunting. IIED will continue to do everything we can, working with our partners to make change happen and to meet the demands of the moment. 